<laughs> there we go. Hopefully it'll be better this time. Okay, does that help? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> what other questions do y'all have? Um, I have a question about um, part C, number 14. Number and I think it was yesterday, but... Um, yes, same. Yeah, because okay. I got everything right except the speed. Um, and I knew that you mentioned that uh, V naught would be negative, and I put negative V naught plus GT, it was wrong, and I put negative V naught minus GT, and it was also wrong. Oh, okay, so the, the speed part? Yeah, I okay. got it wrong, though. Okay, so uh, Amy, tell me again what you had. Um, negative V naught minus GT and negative V naught plus GT. Because you mentioned that, I mean, initially I put um, negative V naught plus GT, but that put that it was wrong. And um, you mentioned that V naught would be negative in um, that part. So I tried putting that in, but it didn't work. Oh. Okay. Uh, so what was the other option that you tried? Uh, negative V naught plus GT. Now, when you did the algebra, which one did you get? This one or this one? The bottom one or the top one? I had got the bottom one, but it said it was wrong. Okay. Yeah, same. Okay. So <clears throat> this, you're right. This, this is the correct answer. Okay? okay. But let's talk about what that means for a minute. Okay. okay. Uh, what it's asking for is what is the speed of the package? Now, what does that word speed mean? Um, let me let me just let me be, ask a better question. What's the difference between speed and velocity? One is a vector, right? Yes. Which one is which? Velocity is a vector. Correct. It's scalar. Exactly. So, speed means how fast. I don't care which way, just how fast. Okay. Velocity means how fast and which way. Does that make sense, the difference between those two? Mm -hmm. Now, what did this question ask for? It's a speed. Yes. Okay. So, in other words, it doesn't care which way it's going. All it cares is how fast is it going. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Direction is indicated by the sign. Down, but normally means down for this problem is positive, up for this problem is negative. Mm -hmm. right? right? You all remember that? Okay, so <clears throat> which way, if this is the answer, which is correct, which way is the package going, up or down? It's going up. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, a good answer. <laughs> You're not sure which way it's going, right? Because yeah. it depends on the time. It starts out going up. That's what the negative sign means. But then how long it, if you give it enough time, it's going to start going back down. Does that make sense? So we don't know the answer because it doesn't tell us how much time it is. We don't know if it's going up or down. But what does the, the question ask? It wants the speed. It doesn't care if it's going up or down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So here's what it's looking for. It wants the positive. Whatever your answer is here, when they finally give you numbers, which they never do for this problem, whatever the answer is, it wants the positive value of it. Oh, okay. Because oh, the positive sorry. value means, I don't care if it's positive or negative, it's just going to make it positive. How would I put that into WebAssign? Is there like an absolute value? Oh, I see now. I see now. Okay. It should be one of the options in there, on your, on your palette bar in there. Uh, okay, that's great. That's even better. Okay. Does that make sense why, why it is that way? Yeah. And, and by the way, if this were a test question and you got this answer, I'd give you full credit for that. I'd be like, okay. great job. But because it's a computer and it's real tukey and you know it, it, it wants you to think through that, so that, 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 that's fine. This is more correct. And if you did put either this on the test too, I'd, I'd probably give you bonus points. 
Oh, the negatives need to go on the inside, right? Not the outside. Well, because you put these absolute values on here, this answer is the same thing as V naught minus GT. Whoops. Okay. This and this are going to be the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if without the absolute value bars, one of them would be positive and one of them would be negative. But when you put the absolute value bars on there, it doesn't matter which one is which. So this is the same as this. Okay. So it might like this one better, actually. And that's just a syntax issue. That doesn't make any difference. OK, so does that help with the helicopter problem? Yeah. Good. And Lena still got it wrong. Oh, you, did you try it this way? Yeah. Hmm. Did you use the absolute value bars from the palette bar? Isn't it? Are they like the little bracket? Like what do they look like? Let me see. I'm not sure. Let me. I'm looking on uh, symbols. Maybe. No, that's not it. Oh, uh, what's this? No, that's not it. Uh, let me see. Relations. No, that's not it. Sets. No. Vectors. No. Oh, there it is. On operations, the bottom left. Okay. And uh, that V naught, this, this might be what's messing it up. That V naught mm -hmm. is a V subscript zero, not O, zero. Okay. I'm going to try typing it myself here. Yet, uh, we're supposed to be done at uh, 4.30, so just come on back then, Robert. 4.30? 4 or 4.30? I mean, you can come back at 4. It might be done earlier. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Subscript 0. Minus GT and it won't let me submit that. I don't know. Did it take it? Did you when you tried to be done? It did? Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so what's next? Um, I keep getting, on a few questions, I keep getting um, the thing that says, your response is, with, is within 10% of the correct value. Um, do you think that's due to too many significant figures? No, if I, uh, as long as you're giving it three sig figs and your answer is correct, that's, that's the answer it's looking for. For the um, first one, I put, um, for the firkins, I put um, how many cubic meters are there in 5.46 firkins? And the answer I put up is like 0 0.2019. And I guess maybe I should have put 202. I think I, did, I think I did put 202, but I think it also put it as wrong. Which number is this? Number um, one? Number one, yeah. Number one. Okay. I mean, maybe it's just a little bit of an adjustment issue. Maybe it's just me adjusting to a, a web assign. Maybe I'll learn how to do. Um, yeah, web assign is too key. I agree. Let me yeah. see if I can get to yours here. Say it again now. Is it usually three sig figs unless it says otherwise? Correct. It, it always wants three sig figs unless, like on number four, see where it says, uh, yeah. it's got that little blue thing with the 4.0 and a check mark. That, yeah, means, that, that means it cares about sig figs on that one. I had an issue with that one, too, um, okay. with the putting in too many sig figs. Okay, so that one does care about sig figs. The others, it just, does, it just goes with three. 
I put in like four six figs and I would do like I felt like eight point eight one was the three six so there was the three six fig answer. Uh huh. I think it was like eight point one seven nine or something like that, just for the sake of um, argument. Um, and I would just put I would put like eight point eight point one eight eight one eight point one eight zero and just a bunch of other stuff and it just didn't work out. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> it's done now. I can't put any more answers in. Because I did it so many times, but um, just oh no! Okay, yeah. what, okay, so when you're working on these, notice the little plus mark up there. It tells you how many times you've tried. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you can use that to, to see uh, where you're at. So if you've already tried one, and also if you look at the previous answers button, you can see which ones you've already tried. Don't don't try the same number again. Yeah. Oh, um, there is. Yeah, like let me look at the previous answers one for the one that I missed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at yours right now, Amy, and yeah. uh, your answers are, are just, they're close, but they're not right. Uh, like, am I just wrong entirely? Or? Yeah, it's just wrong. Okay. So, uh, it's, you, want, you want to step through number one? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'll use Amy's numbers here because that's the one I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, uh, a Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> a I don't have, um, just interrupting, sorry. Uh, right. They said my ebook says that I should have end sheets that help can help me with conversion stuff. I don't have that at all. What's an so end I don't sheet? have any form of getting conversions to help. Okay, the only thing that you uh, need is the equation sheet. Uh, which is on the class website. Okay. So if you go to the class website, you can download the equation sheet. Yeah, uh, Chelsea's holding it up right there. Uh, All right. The last page of that uh, is a conversion sheet. All right. So you can print that off, and that is safe to use on the tests and the quizzes, okay? Okay. Thank but, you. Uh, a firkin will not be on there because that's a bizarre unit that nobody uses oh, except for this problem. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it is on this problem just because they want you to get used to changing units. So uh, it says a firkin is an old British unit equal to nine gallons. Okay, so let me write that up here. Uh, one firkin equals nine gallons. And it asks, uh, how many cubic meters are there in 5.46 firkins? So we've got 5.46 firkins, and we need to convert that to cubic meters. So what we'll do here is we'll use the conversion that they gave us, and we'll write one firkin equals nine gallons. So I'm going to put a firkin downstairs here. One. Firkin and nine gallons up here. And what that does is that cancels out the firkins. So when I multiply 5.46 times nine, my answer will be in gallons. But that's not the answer it asked for. It wants cubic meters. So now I need to know how many gallons are in a cubic meter. And I don't know that answer, but you have an equation sheet. So uh, and I saw Chelsea had one. Chelsea, how many, how many gallons are in a cubic meter? Gallon? Yeah. Mm. Do you have gallons to anything metric? I got one gallon equals 3.786 liters. Okay. One gallon equals three point what now? 3.786 786 liters? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so we'll use that one, and that'll get us away from gallons, and we'll get us into the metric system at least. So I'm gonna put one gallon here. Are we gonna end up going to, um, like, milliliters to centimeters cubed? Well, I think we'll just go straight from liters to a cubic meter. Okay. How did I know to put gallons downstairs? So that I can cancel it out, right? Exactly. 
because this gallons and this gallons have to cancel out. So uh, that's how, how, how I know it goes down there. Okay. And uh, Sarah, we, we could go that way, go down the cubic centimeters road, but that would just add more steps to this that aren't necessary. There's nothing okay. wrong with doing that. Uh, it just, you know, it just gives us more steps than we need. Uh, <clears throat> and then if you, uh, Chelsea, look on the equation sheet. Is liters to cubic meters on there? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Let me see. Well, Lake, I, it says uh, there's liters to cubic centimeters. Yeah. Oh, is that what it has? Liters yeah. to cubic centimeters? Okay, well, <laughs> we, we can go. This is the way you wanted to go, isn't it, Sarah? <laughs> uh, okay. Mine added milliliters in. That would take longer. Okay. So, uh, so we'll go to, from liters to cubic centimeters. So how many liters are in a cubic centimeter? Or other way around, how many cubic centimeters are in a liter? One liter yeah. is 1,000 cubic yeah. centimeters. Okay, so one liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. <laughs> okay, now how do we go from cubic centimeters to lead to cubic meters? How many centimeters are in a meter? And this one may or may not be on there, but you, you need to know the metric system. Think cents, as in centimeter. How many cents are in a dollar? How many years are in a century? Ten. Try it again. A hundred. Yeah, there's a hundred years in a century, right? And a hundred cents in a dollar? Yeah. And so there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. Okay, so uh, that, that prefix centa, oops, that prefix centa means hundred. So there's a hundred centimeters in one meter. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, now here's the last step. This doesn't get you there because that will leave you, you'll still have, a, you'll still have two more centimeters up here. You've got a centimeter and it's cubed. Here you've got a centimeter and it's not cubed. You see how it doesn't get rid of that? Mm -hmm. So what should we do? We need to cube the whole. Yeah, we need to do this two more times. A hundred centimeters, one meter. A hundred centimeters, one meter. And now you've got centimeter times centimeter times centimeter and what's that? Uh, a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter is a centimeter cubed. And so the three of these combine, this one, this one, this one, those three combine to get rid of that. Okay. And then you're left with a meter times a meter times a meter, which would be a meter cubed, otherwise known as a cubic meter. Okay. And the liters cancel out here, and the gallons cancel out here, and of course the Perkins we already canceled out. So would you multiply that out and then try to do the seconds? Or would you add on the... What do you mean, uh, do the seconds? Like, it could... Oh, never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. That's right. So yeah, you just multiply across the top and then divide by everything on the bottom. Okay.
What other questions do y'all have? Um, Are you done with this one? I mean, do you have any more questions about this one? Anybody? Oh, no. I'm good with that one. Okay. I just got to multiply it out. I did with my numbers. Okay. okay. Amy, do you, uh, what number do you get when you punch this out now, Amy? Oh, I'm done. I, I, I did it too many times. Oh, I know, but... Oh, you want me to actually do that? Okay, yeah, um, see what number you get when you use, when you punch it out now. Okay, well, it's gonna just give me just a minute. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, the goal of the homework is to uh, learn how to do it. And if you use up your tries, well, that wasn't the goal. The goal was to learn how to do it, so. Yeah, I guess you're right. Can you move aside? Oh, just sorry, I'm right in the middle, sorry. Sorry. Just pull up my calculator real quick. Okay. Yeah, I got um, 0.186. Yeah, that's that's the correct answer. And let me see, did I put anything like that on? Yeah, I guess when I put like 0.2019, I guess that's within 10% of 0.186. So exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's close. Yeah. It's just not quite right. It, but I mean, maybe I now I guess now I learned my lesson about using up all my tries in my homework. Yeah. Yeah. Try not to use them up. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, so. The best approach, I think, to doing this is to try it really, I mean, try it on your own, maybe use up two tries on your own or three tries, yeah. but reserve a couple tries to, to ask me about it. Okay. Now I know. But, but do work through it on your own, because if you don't struggle with it ahead of time, yeah. then it won't make any sense when you ask me about it. I mean, you've got to learn how to do it some way or another, so now, 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 I, uh, now I know. Okay, good. Okay, so what are we moving to next? 12, honestly, I don't look at it. I don't know how, where to start. Okay. You don't know how or where, how or where to start a number 12. Is that right? No, I just don't know where to start. Okay. Like, Let me look at it. Number 12. Okay. A record of travel along a straight path is as follows. So it starts from rest with a constant acceleration and goes for 16 seconds. So it starts here and goes a good ways, we don't know how far over here, okay? And we know acceleration and we know time. Uh, Chelsea, what was your acceleration? Uh, 2.90. And what was your time? Uh, 19. Okay, and and then it goes from there. It maintains a constant velocity for 1.2 minutes. Well, I'm gonna make this shorter now. Okay. And it goes from here to here, and v is constant, and the time is 1.2 minutes. Or what was your time? Uh, 2.70 minutes. 2.70 minutes, okay? And then the third leg, it says, it then applies a constant negative acceleration for a certain time period. So then it goes from here to here. And what was your acceleration here? Uh, negative 9.30. 9.30? Mm-hmm. Okay, and what was your time? Uh, 5.92. Okay, so <clears throat> you have to draw this out like I have here, and the, the thing you need to realize is that from here, at here, at this point, at the very beginning, the car starts out not moving at all. So it starts out, velocity equals zero. Can you move it over a little bit? Well, hold on, I might be. Oh, am I, am I off the screen again? Oh, no, you're good. It's just my thing was in the way. You're fine. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so, uh, oh, maybe my body's in the way. So we start here at zero meters per second and then get faster and faster and faster and faster until we get here. And this is when you're going as fast as you're gonna go. And here, you just cruise at constant speed. And so starting at this point, you just hit the cruise control button and the thing just drives. And you're just going, going at, so however fast you end up here, that's the speed you hold from here until you get to there. To my the acceleration was? Well, yeah, so, so for this part here, you're gonna accelerate, get faster and faster and faster until you get to this point. Once you get to that point, then you hold a constant speed the rest of the way. Okay. So for this chunk here, from here to there, you're gonna use velocity is distance over time or change in X over time. Because that's the only equation that deals with constant speed. And the speed you have is gonna be the final speed that you found over here. So for this one, you need to know what's the final speed and how far did it travel? You need to know these two things for this leg. How would you find final speed? From one of our fantastic four, right? Yep, yep. You know the initial speed, you know the acceleration, you know the time. How are you gonna to get to final speed? Could we do the third one? Uh, that'll give you distance, which you also have to find, but it won't give you final speed. Second one? Yeah, that's going to be the easiest way. So for what you'll do is you'll say acceleration is change in velocity over time, which is that remember that triangle, it means final minus initial. So final minus initial divided by time. What's the initial speed? Uh, the initial speed is zero. Yeah, so this piece is zero for this problem. So now you just solve it for final speed, and that'll tell you the speed here. How, how are you gonna, what are you gonna, how are you gonna solve this equation for VF? I have another question. Okay, go ahead. For the legs, like the leg one, leg two, and leg three, uh -huh. or is it for all the displacement, like the displacement? Say that question again now. Would it be like for the leg, or would it be for the displacement? Oh, okay. Uh, displacement means how far. Mm -hmm. So when it's asking for the displacement, it means how far is this leg? And when I say leg, I mean this piece of the trip of the trip. There's this first piece, and then there's this second piece, and then there's this third piece. And and you those those are the legs. Leg one, leg two, and leg three. Mm -hmm. And then when it says displacement, it means how far did it travel during leg one? How far did it travel during leg two? What's the displacement of leg one? What's the displacement of leg two? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, so, so, what was the question you asked me? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Did I ask you a question? I think you asked me how would I. Oh yeah, how would you solve this equation for final velocity? Uh, what mm, multiply T on both sides, right? Correct. Multiply T on both sides. And that'll cancel this out here, so you'd have VF equals A times T. Mm -hmm. And so then you can find the final speed there. And then whatever that final speed is there, that is the speed for this, for the second leg. And then okay. you can apply this equation there. So you have to find 
So that would be for that point. But it'd be for the final velocity, like that whole leg right there, or? Right, right. So this, this final speed here mm -hmm. is this final speed right here. Okay. It's the final speed for leg one. Now, so how would you find the displacement for leg one? You have to use the other one I said earlier, correct? Yes, equation number three. So you okay. use uh, delta x equals v naught times t plus one half a times t squared. And what's okay. your v naught? What's your initial speed for this problem? Zero. Yeah. So this part goes away. And so then you just plug in your acceleration, your time, that'll tell you how far. And that'll be the distance for leg one, or the displacement okay. for leg one. So the, um, the, final, the, the final velocity would be 55.1, because that's 2.9 times 19. Is that right? Uh, yeah, 2.9 times 19 is 1.5 times 19. What did you say it was? 55.1. Yeah, as long as those units are correct. I didn't write down the units. Let me double check that. Yeah, those are the right units. I would plug in, so for X, I'll plug in v, v at final. Right, weight. so this would be, what did you say the number was, Amy? Uh, 55.1. Okay, so that's the final speed, and and then uh, what's the ex what's the delta x? I'm working on that right now. Okay. So you just plug in 2.9 and 19, but don't forget to square that t, and then you got a half in front of the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I do this a little slowly. That's okay. Take your time. So for Delta X, I got um, 523.45. That's what I got for one half AT squared. But I'm, I'm using my phone calculator here. I'm not using my TI-84, so that could be wrong. Okay. She's right. It's about, what she said it was? About 23.5. Yeah. I got Is that, that what right. you got too? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, that looks good. So uh, now, now that you all have this information, I'm going to start using a different color here so we can figure out the difference of what we're doing here. How do we find... Delta X for leg two. Okay, wait one, hold one second. Go ahead. Um, okay. I'm trying to write this down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the displacement between here and here. We haven't found the total displacement, right? Correct. All okay. we did is find the displacement for leg one from here to here. Okay. So, but now, what I'm asking you is, what's the displacement from here to here on leg two? Um, if you have to start out with the, is it a different equation for me? Which, which equation do you think? I mean, what is the person? Yep, it's number one. If there's no acceleration, then the only equation you can use is number one. Okay. Okay. And, and this one tells you that the speed is constant, the velocity is constant, which means there is no acceleration. So okay. that's the equation you want to use. Okay. Will we use the. Hold on, what is it? <clears throat> 
So we have to use the 55.1 divided by the, um, well, you have to turn the minutes into seconds, right? Yep. First thing you gotta do is convert this to seconds because those are wrong units. So how do you do that? Um, it'll be like the minutes on the bottom, right? Like one minute. Uh huh. And then 60 seconds on top. Yep, you're right. One minute here, 60 seconds there. So that'll give you time. But then looking at your equation up here, how do you solve that equation for delta x? Uh, you multiply the time on both sides. Yep, exactly. So delta x is going to be velocity times time. So your velocity is going to be that 55.1. Your mm -hmm. time is going to be whatever this is when you multiply that out. Okay. I have a question. Is distance and displacement the same thing or no? It's like speed and velocity. Okay. Uh, displacement is the vector form. Distance is the scalar form. Okay. So, so distance means how far. Displacement means how far and which way. Okay. Sarah, did you already get this one? I did. I got a big one, but I don't know if it's right. What'd you get? I got 8,926.2. That's exactly what I got. Okay. 8,900 who? 8,926.2. And you got the same thing, Amy? Yeah. Good. Okay. Y'all are doing good. Now, that's leg one and leg two. Now, leg three. The driver hits the brakes. That negative sign right there means they're slowing down. So the driver hits the brakes and they're slowing down. And now we still need to find, we still have the same question, how far did the person travel? Okay, now one of the things you might want to look at also, let me read the question. Uh, Sorry, am I only distracted by my dog? <laughs> That's all right. Uh, okay. So now that we know all of this previous information, how are we going to solve this one? How far does the person travel here? The person's hitting their brakes on this stretch, on this leg. Any ideas? Let me rephrase the question. Which of the Fantastic Four should we use? Would it be the second? Um, acceleration equals change in velocity over time. There's no distance in there. There's no delta x. So this one won't tell you that. Uh, would it be delta x equals uh, v initial t plus 1 half a t squared? That's correct. That's the, the third equation. That's the one that's going to give you that information. Okay. So we're going to use delta x is equal to v naught times t plus one half a times t squared. And what should we plug in there for the initial velocity? It's zero, right? So that we can't Well, like the initial velocity for leg one was zero. Oh. But what's the initial velocity for leg three? A 55.1. Exactly. How do you know that? Um, that's what I, that's what I'm sorry. That's Go ahead, Amy. Go ahead, Amy, say it again. That's what it's been cruising at this whole time for the second leg. Exactly. That's, how, that's what it accelerated to in the first leg. That's what it cruised at in the second leg. And that's how fast it's going at the beginning of the third leg when the driver hits the brakes. The key is at the beginning, because that's what V-naught means, the initial, the beginning. OK, so we're going to plug in 55.1 there. And the time 
we're going to use the 5.92 seconds and for the acceleration we'll use this 9.3 there you go. Punch it out and see what you get there. So what do you get for delta x3? I got 489.1, you won't, well, I got 148.916. 148? Um, yeah. No, 489. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. 489.1. 1, well, yeah, point 0.2. You can put point 0.6. Point 0.2? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Did you, did you get the same thing, Amy? Um, actually, no, because the um, second half, the AT squared, is um, negative because the A is negative. Oh, I didn't put that. You're right. So that, that negative sign makes a big difference. What'd you get, um, Amy? Uh, one second. Okay. 163.22. One sixty-three. Is that what you got, Chelsea? Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, now that we've done all that, what is the question asking anyway? Okay, so part A says, what's the total displacement for the trip? Okay, so how are we going to find that based on what we now know? You add them all together, right? Yeah, fine. You're going to add delta x for leg one plus delta x for leg two plus delta x for leg three. And that'll be the total displacement of the whole trip. Okay, that's part A. Part B asks, what is the average speed for each of the three legs and the final trip, and the total trip? Okay, so how do you find average speed? How do you find speed? You could do the first one, can you? Yep. Equation number one. So the average speed for leg one is, there's the equation. Equation number one, delta x over t. Grab your delta x, grab your t, find the quotient. Div divide this by that. And then do the same thing here. The average speed for leg two is distance divided by time. Of course, this one's easy. What's the average speed for leg two going to be? You don't have to do any any number crunching. Oh wait! It moved the same speed the whole time, right? Yeah. So that will be its average speed. Okay. Right. Because its speed didn't change; it stayed the same speed the whole time. So what was the average of saying the same the whole time? It'll be the same thing. Yeah, it'd be 55.1. And in the last leg, that, that speed changed, so you, you, you don't really know without doing the math. You have to do delta x divided by t. And then it wants the average speed for the whole trip. Well, then it's going to be all the whole delta x divided by all the time. So you have to add all the delta x's together and add all the times together and then divide by the two. OK. Okay. Does that Wait, make sense? Divide by the two? Say it again now. You said divide by the two? Right, right. Divide delta x over time. Okay. But it's asking for speed. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good.
So the temp for speed is that V, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then that's where I got confused. Okay. And uh, we can call this speed or velocity because everything's positive here, right? Because positive just means going to the right, and everything's going to the right on this. That's a velocity because it's a number and to the right. But it's also a speed because it's just a number. So you can use, for this problem, you can use speed and velocity interchangeable. Okay. Amy, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Sarah, how are you doing over there? I'm doing pretty good. This is actually really making a lot of sense to me. Oh, good. Okay. I just didn't want to interrupt because uh, I'm not the person who asked the question. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. And, I'm and... just using my own numbers, so. Oh, okay. Is it... I'm just having to compare ballpark, like. If right, I'm getting right. something outrageously large compared to them, then I'm doing it wrong. Okay. But I think I'm getting close to what they're getting. Okay. Okay. Good. Can you repeat how to do that? How to get the average speed stuff again? Yeah. Average speed is just the speed equation. Equation number one. So it's distance over time. So to find the average speed for leg one, you take the distance of leg one and divided by the time for leg one. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing for each leg. And then the last question asks, what's the average speed of the whole trip? That means the total distance, leg one plus leg two plus leg three, divided by the total time, time one plus time two plus time three. Y'all let me know whenever you're ready to move on. One more. Okay. You're fine. Take your time. I don't want to push you. I just wanted to let you know that. For leg one, it's 55.1 divided by the 19. No. No, no, no. no, no, no. Okay. Okay. I see it now. Scratch that. Okay. 523.45 divided by 19, right? Yes. 523.45 divided by 19. Yeah. Okay. Amy. Yeah? Are you getting 27.6? For which one? Or I'm getting it for all three legs. 27.6? Um, Is that right? I got that for the first one. That sounds and right then, for the first one. It doesn't sound right. For, it's not right for the second one. Yeah. And then... For the second one, you want to do this distance here divided by this time. And I didn't write that one. Whatever 2.7 times 60 is. Yeah, and for the third one, I also got 27.6. Yeah. 
That might be. I got 55.1 for the second leg. That's correct. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. And then again, the 27.6 again for the third leg. Which okay. Yeah, so. Okay, we're well, good. Okay, does that make sense, y'all? Yeah. I'll open that. Good. That's all the questions I had. Okay. I need. Those are good questions. Chelsea, have you done the lab yet? Lab one? Okay. I need to, though. I'm just checking. Tomorrow. Okay, good. I have another question. So if we have like accommodations, can we still get those through online or? Say that one more time. If we have like academic accommodations, oh. can we skip those online or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you know the usual paperwork path. And then mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll end up adding time to your quizzes and tests if, if that's okay. what the accommodations call for, which is usually what they have. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. What other questions do y'all have? I don't have any. Chelsea said she's done. Amy doesn't have any. Sarah, do you have any quizzes? Any questions? Um, yeah, I guess if I had one. Um, number four, just like how to draw it, because I'm trying to draw it right now and I'm... Number four, let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me get your numbers here. Because I think I know how to do it, but I'm not sure how to like draw it on the paper. system here. And your biggest numbers are five. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is Y. This is X. Your first point, uh, Sarah, is 4.5, is that right? Yes. So that's, so that's going to be over here in between 4 and 5, so that's going to be right there. And that's over 4.5 and then up 3.2, so 1, 2, 3, so just a little past 3, so it's going to be right here. So that's your first point. So it'll be 4.5 comma 3.2 at that point. Does that make sense? Yes. And then the next one is 3.1 but negative, so it's going to go this way. 1, 2, 3, just a little past 3. And then up 4.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so halfway here. So it's going to go about here. So that's your second point. Negative 3.1. And so it gives you those two points, and the units are centimeters, and it wants to know the distance between. So if you draw a straight line from here to here, how long is that line? 
That's what it's asking for. Does that make sense, Sarah? Mm -hmm. I think I was making it complicated for myself. Okay, that, that's easy to do. How are you gonna find that distance? Yeah, this is, I'm pretty sure this is where I got complicated. Okay. Here's the way you want to do it. Think about it like a triangle. I I drew it on the other on another piece of paper uh -huh. like a triangle, uh -huh. and then uh, down to the origin. Oh, okay. Oh, but, here, just draw a straight line over. Okay. And a straight line down. So you have your delta x and your delta y. Okay. And then once you have a right triangle like that, then you can use Pythagorean theorem. You know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Mm -hmm. And then find that find the length of that hypotenuse. How would you find delta y? Delta Y would be uh, it's probably it's probably trigonometry. I haven't done trig in a while. No, it's 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 no. right here. It's buried in it's these just numbers. Because the... this number says how far over and how far up. That's what this one this one means. Mm -hmm. And this Is one it... means how far over and how far up. And delta Y means what's the difference in how far up? Okay. So you've got a four point five, that's so this one here, that's 4.5. And this one here, okay, I see what you're doing. That's yeah. 3.2. And from here to here, that's your delta y. Does that make sense? Yes. So just subtract those two numbers and that'll tell you your delta y. Okay. And for the the delta x, would you add them instead? You'd add the two. Well, x's? it's, it's going to be it's, it'll be minus, but minus a negative. Mm -hmm. So it'll be okay. uh, a different okay, color. Yeah. This one here, that's uh, four point five, and this one here, uh, negative three point one, and so you'll do. 4.5 minus negative 3.1, uh -huh. which you're right, ends up adding, but it's still a subtraction, but it ends up adding. So that's the only question I had. See, okay. I, was, I was doing it a different way. That was making it very complicated. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Glad this helps. Okay. Well, if y'all don't have any other questions, we can be done. Unless you have more questions. Yeah. Was that, yeah, you have a question or, yeah, you want to be done? Yeah, I want to be done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no more. <laughs> okay. I'm good. I'm just, I just don't have any at the moment. I understand. Sounds good. Uh, when do we meet again? Is it is it next Wednesday? I forgot. Well, whatever's on the schedule. I think it's next Wednesday. So. But you said you're going to um, have it up live, right? Like recorded? Yes. I'll put this, uh, assuming that my recording worked. Uh, I think it Joy. did, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the recording looks like it's doing well. So, and for what it's worth, the recording will only show me, the people can hear y'all's questions, but they won't see you, they'll only see me. Oh, thank God, okay. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, so there we go. And I'll put this All recording right. up online so that y'all can go back and see what, what did he say when he did this or whatever, <laughs> or, or anybody else who was at work right now and couldn't come to the study session. And they can yes. they can see what y'all are. Well, I am out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Again. Sounds good. See y'all later. Have a good Thank day. Bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah.